and it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today on this Monday. Uh, so we're going to get to the super thanks today. Uh, this will be a pretty short video. And uh, the topic for today actually doesn't come from, from one of the super thanks. It's actually something uh, that I just kind of wanted to talk about briefly about J.J. Ridiculous and, and his coaching job with the now L.A. Fakers, formerly known as the Lakers. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's get started here. First of all, I want to give a shout out uh, to those who have joined the membership so far. Shout out to Ed G, the great one. Uh, shout out to uh, at Adidas20 and shout out to Dr. Les Barrett. Uh, thank you all so, so much for joining the membership. Like I said, uh, I'll be uploading some some music uh, for the members and uh, doing some members only lives and things like that. But thank you guys so, so much for joining the membership. And without further ado, let's get to the first super thanks. First up, shout out to at shifting to success. He comes through with the ten dollar super thanks. And this has come from my uh, Bronny James exposed in first game as a Laker. He says, what's up, Uncommon? I hope you've been doing well, homie. I got a couple of things about this entire LeBron, Bronny situation. Number one, I truly believe that LeBron wanted Bronny to play in the NBA because Michael Jordan's son never did. Again, trying to one-up Jordan with narratives rather than actual work ethic. I completely 100 percent agree with that you know amongst other things but that is not a far-fetched thing to think that lebron was sitting there thinking oh well you know uh i couldn't pass him in championships uh couldn't pass him in popularity uh people don't like me so uh hmm, what, what what can i do uh, Bron Bronny, Bronny, you, you're going to have to play in the NBA. I know you're not ready, but we're, we're going to tell the whole world that you're ready and we're going to get you on the Lakers. My, Michael Jordan never did that. <laughs> uh, but let's continue. Uh, he says, and number two, Bronny isn't ready for the NBA or is nowhere near ready for the NBA because look at who he had to learn from. Since LeBron doesn't have a bag, his skill set of plowing over people can't translate to Bronny. Facts. He's not big enough. And LeBron can't teach Bronny fundamentals because he doesn't have any fundamentals. So what can he teach him? Bronny better embrace traveling, flopping, and complaining to walk in his dad's footsteps. Shout out to at shifting to success. Yeah, facts. I mean, I, I was thinking about that the other day, and it's like, when you watch Bronny, unfortunately for Bronny, his uh, example, the, the example closest to him of how to approach the game of basketball has come from LeBron James. So when you see Bronny not doing just the simple things that you would think uh, someone who's that young, someone who's supposedly trying to earn their place, even though they... They were able to get this place before they earned it. So now they got the place and have to prove to everyone that they deserve it. Uh, LeBronny Bronny James or LeBronny James uh, <laughs> just doesn't play with that sense of urgency. You know, even in terms of running back on defense or on a fast break, really trying to sprint and get those easy points. He doesn't do those things. And, you know, a lot of it is, what do you expect when you're watching LeBron James? A lot of it is things LeBron James does himself. So, you know, and, and again, you know, right on the money with, the you know, the things that work for LeBron James is not going to work for Bronny because Bronny's, you know, not that athletically gifted. So, you know, anyway, I don't think Bronny's going to last long in the league. I think this whole thing is backfiring. Uh, it seems to be getting much more criticism than people on board with this, especially since he, you know, hasn't shown 
at any point that he's capable. You know, he he didn't show it in college. Uh, He didn't show it in the summer league. And now in preseason, again, it's it's more the same. So, you know, uh, I think this whole thing is backfiring. But shout out to Ash. Shifting to success. Thank you so, so much for the $10 super thanks. Thank you so, so much for the continued support of the channel. And next up, uh, shout out to at QQ. 1981 he comes through with the $20 super thanks and this is coming from my Michael Jordan's commercial exposes LeBron James video uh and he just simply says thanks so uh thanks to you shout out to you and thanks so much for the continued support of the channel I truly cannot thank you enough uh next shout out to uh at Blaine Almeida comes through with the two dollar super thanks um and this is from my lebron james response to to criticism from kwame brown about his lack of a bag and uh he just simply says thanks so uh, thanks to you thanks for your continued support of the channel and uh yeah we all know you know again uh lebron james has been quick to well he's always quick to respond to Criticism, but again, you know, nothing about Diddy. Again, nothing about Chael Sonnen, you know, but <laughs> uh, t- t- time will reveal all things, as they say. Uh, next up, shout out to at Story Games uh, 8520 comes through with the $2 super thanks, and he says, I'm going to start calling LeBron (laughs) as the Eddie Guerrero of the NBA. (laughs) He lies, he cheats, and he steals. Uh, Can't disagree with any of that. Um, And this is coming from my Why the Heck is LeBron James Still Playing video. Uh, Shout out to At Story Games 8520. Thanks so much for the $2 super thanks. And last but not least, shout out to at one hawk. And this is coming from my video yesterday about Isaiah Thomas accusing Joe Dumars of snitching to Michael Jordan about the Detroit Pistons inner workings. And this is how, according to Isaiah Thomas, this is how uh, Michael Jordan was able to beat them. You know, this is one of the ever-changing narratives for Isaiah Thomas. You know, first it was he complained to the refs. uh, Then it was they got old. And now, you know, apparently it's because Michael Jordan was friends with Joe Dumars, even though I've never heard that before. (laughs) I've heard they had mutual respect for each other. You know, they didn't trash talk each other. They just simply played hard. But I have never heard... (laughs) that they actually had a friendship. So, uh, and I don't think this has been confirmed anywhere, but according to Isaiah Thomas, this is a reason why the Bulls were able to get over the Detroit Pistons hump. But anyway, shout out to one, one Hawk who comes with the, through with the $5 super thanks and he just simply says, thanks. The truth serum requires constant infusion. Keep giving it to them, and I no doubt will do that. Uh, Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And so really quickly, let's get into the topic of the video, what I wanted to discuss and why I wanted to discuss it. Because I was watching, um, I can't remember who it was. Might have been Man Down Sports. Um, But uh, anyway, they were, or it might have been Ticket TV, actually. But uh, they were talking about J.J. Reddick's response to, um, or I should say lack of response, to how Bronny James has played. And and it just got me thinking, um, from the very beginning, J.J. Reddick has always been super defensive when it comes to Bronny James. I mean, if you just look at any of these interviews, the mention someone brings up, the minute someone brings up Bronny, he gets defensive. I mean, even back when, you know, Bronny first got drafted and, uh, you know, uh, I forgot what the exact question was that the reporter asked him, but he immediately got defensive and went on this whole, uh, Bronny James has earned his place here. Nothing was given to him. He, he earned his place here. 
You know, just like me, just like me, the coach who's never coached a day in my life, I, I earned my place here as well. Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, it, it kind of makes sense. Uh, <laughs> how could J.J. Reddick uh, criticize someone for not earning their position when he's kind of in the exact same position? But it got me thinking, you know, everybody has, you know, I don't know if we've got ever got a real answer or uh, or answer that makes sense why J.J. Reddick is coaching the Lakers. Why someone who uh, wasn't even good at podcasting <laughs> is now the coach of the storied franchise with such a rich history from, you know, Kobe to Magic to Kareem to uh, Jerry West to Wilt, you know, uh, why someone like J.J. Reddick is now in a position to coach their team, besides the obvious that the deer, the duck, has completely not only ruined the Lakers organization, but the NBA as well. But we're all wondering, you know, why is J.J. Reddick in this place except for the fact that for some reason, LeBron James wanted him. And, you know, it, it, Fanboys, you guys can say whatever you want, but no one can convince me that J.J. Reddick isn't there for one person and one person only, and this is LeBron James. And so, you know, it got me thinking, like, that. you know, they, they forced out Darvin Ham to bring in J.J. Reddick. And then, so I'm starting to put two, two and two together. This is just a theory of mine. It's just my opinion, people. Fanboys, go cry in the corner. Uh, you know, they forced out Darvin Ham to, to bring in J.J. Reddick. And J.J. Reddick is super defensive about Bronny James. And it got me thinking, I think maybe J.J. Reddick was actually bought in by LeBron James to handle the Bronny situation. To do what he... To do what LeBron James wants him to do regarding Bronny, and that is uh, protect him with every breath. That is to cap for Bronny. That is to play Bronny when he thinks Bronny should be played. And, yeah, basically that's it. To me, it's a possibility that maybe J.J. Redick is in this place simply to cap for Bronny. Simply to handle the Bronny situation uh, in a way that I don't think they could have gotten any other coach to handle it in this same way. I don't think if Darvin Ham was still here, and and I'm not saying that they he got rid of Darvin Ham simply because of Bronny, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but I am saying that once they got rid of Darvin Ham. Uh, once LeBron James got rid of Darvin Ham, I think he chose J.J. Reddick because J.J. Reddick would cap for Bronny. You know, I don't think any other coach would have did it. Now, I'm not saying any other coach would have just, you know, c told it completely like it is about Bronny. But like I said, the way J.J. Reddick is super defensive about Bronny, uh, and yeah, I, I can't see another coach... Uh, doing that but anyway <laughs> it's just my thoughts it's just my opinion uh let me know what you guys think in the comments uh why do you think that the lakers allowed someone like jj reddit to actually coach the franchise aside from the fact that you know uh again Le they have allowed lebron james to ruin the franchise uh again just my opinion uh the lebron and genie bus thing uh i would say is more than meets the eye there the, my opinion again but uh yeah uh why do you guys think jj reddick was allowed to be in this position and uh do you think it could be something to the fact that maybe that's because uh again uh, J.J. Reddick was chosen because he would handle the Bronny situation exactly the way LeBron James and the Lakers wanted that situation handled. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. All right. <laughs>